segment. Oh, I get some heat for this. Two. <laughs> Try to get heat. It's your thing. No, I know, but, uh, you know, I'm not going to get into it. They but hate us because they ain't us. They hate us because they ain't us. Mm -hmm. Boy, I, I got to be careful with that one. <laughs> segment two, meat and potatoes of the show. Now, remember in segment four, Dave, Liz, Dave Linden, excuse me, world's largest mixer, business titan, uh, will be on the show. Segment four, uh, and uh, Dave, if you're out there, you better get to the studio, baby. Okay, couple things, couple things, couple things. Mm -hmm. What I want to get into in segment two, meat and potatoes. As you well know, uh, Nicole Taylor Sharp, hashtag Sharp Tank. Sharp Tank, hoo ha ha. Is that the new one, hoo ha ha? That's from Finding Nemo, Shark Tank, Shark oh. Bait, Shark oh. Bait, hoo ha ha. See, I, I, I'm, I yeah, I've got I'm a, a little one still. You know, I watched Finding Nemo one time. Did you? Yeah, I did. It was cool. Okay. So anyway, um, just keep marketing. Just yeah, keep like marketing. I said, we just keep marketing. So we uh, we're marketing guys or not girls or whatever. We're marketing junkies. We business junkies. We talk about this stuff all the time. And certainly when Nicole Taylor Sharp's on the show, certainly follows that flavor. Uh, unlike uh, Firestarter, uh, we. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wise guy. Kiss my Kaepernick. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. So, anyway, um, we talk a lot of business stuff. We do. And um, what I want to talk about a little bit today is something I think everybody can learn from. Okay. Uh, especially, maybe, I don't know. I think men and women react differently in different circumstances. So, I, But the main thing is I want to talk about... Letting your emotions rule the day. Okay. Letting your emotions dictate your actions. Okay. Uh, reacting instead of responding. And I want to talk a little bit about that because I am guilty. I am guilty of uh, allowing my emotions to dictate the action. I'm much better at it than I used to be. Mm -hmm. um, but until I learned what the triggers were. What what's the trigger to send me off the rails? I think that's a good way. To say because it. for you, the emotion that is your trigger and that you struggle with, it has you not that not thinking and responding to a situation, but responding to the emotion is what emotion. Well, you know, I, I will tell you. For me personally, and we'll certainly we are transparent here. Um, for me, it's not what is said; it's when it's said. Okay. Uh, you know, you can't be uh, in a position where the Danny Vegas brand is for all these years without having people throwing some tomatoes at it and sure. not liking it or whatever. And that's fine. It's not what is said. It's when it's said. And if something is said, usually my biggest problem is if when I am under some type of stress, mm -hmm. whether it be at home, yeah, or Financial, like, you know, try chasing money all the time. I need to pay bills, but no one's paying me. That type of stuff. When I get under some type of stress and someone might say something, I can go off the rails. And but what's the, what's the feeling that you have? So is it is it frustration? Is it anger? Is it I regret? Think for is it me, it's when someone taps into what, where I feel incompetent okay uh when someone taps into that unbeknowing to them uh they're so just like tapping they just, into an insecurity an insecurity okay. and i've been working on that for years and i'm much better at it i've really grown a lot over the last year or so two years because i realized what the trigger is okay uh when i'm stressed under some type of stress that opening to that insecurity opens up like the grand canyon and if someone says something that gets in there, I could literally go off the rails. Now, I'm much better at it um, just because I learned the hard way what the triggers are. And when I get into that, when I feel that, I, I literally tell myself, Danny, you are prime because you are stressful. So either stay at home, go watch some TV, go swimming, go do something, get your mind off what Get out of that moment. Get out of that. Get out of it. you got to get out of it. It's just no different than an alcoholic. It's no different than a dope head. It's no different than anything that can open up uh, 
something. So that's that's what I kind of want to talk about today. And I think uh, everybody does it differently. I don't know. I don't know how, you know, and I hate to say it, but, you know, in the past when I was younger, this type of stuff led to physical violence, okay? I, I'm not that way anymore because I'm just <laughs> not that agile. I'm not open to looking for fights like I used to be when I was a young man. So I don't know how women handle that. I don't know if they... You know what? Let me close the doors and go into the refrigerator and eat a whole gallon of ice cream. I, I don't know how that. I think everybody handles it differently. But I can just say that letting your emotions dictate your actions can destroy you in the business world. It only takes a couple times and you, years of work of building a brand of stability and uh, clarity and, uh, and, and credibility can be gone. I, I think that any time that you let your emotions dictate your decisions in business, whether they be those emotions that you're referencing as far as, you know, insecurities that trigger anger, that trigger, you know, for those feelings of, uh, you know, violent impulses like you had back in the Navy days where, where a guy crosses you and says something. Um, oh, it's fight time. To, yeah, to do a, you know, pissing match with you, it's time to punch him in the jaw. Um, I think that women will tend to have different reactions and different feelings. The last time I had a ugly, unfair, in my opinion, confrontation, confrontation was, was treated poorly. Right. Um, in a public venue, in a public situation where there was no escaping. I was right. there, I was there with a client and I had, um, uh, you know, someone who was uh, unfairly frustrated with me because of someone who that I'm associated with had mm -hmm. slighted that person, right, took right, it out on right. me. You know what I'm talking about. Yep. Um, you know, for, for me, I immediately, I went into that PR damage control thought. Um, I wasn't going to back down because I knew I was right without right. making a scene. So I held my ground. For women, I think that the emotion that they struggle with rather than, you know, balling up that fist and punching is right. we don't want to cry in public. Right. And I definitely was right there at the edge. And for, you know, for a woman business, you cry in a room full of 50 people. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Good luck getting that back. Right. Now, I think how women handle it after the fact, where it is a matter of, of how do I handle this now? Uh, one of the reasons why I think sometimes people won't want to work with women, even other women that don't want to work in an office full of women, because right. when they get hurt, when they get offended, when they get angry, they'll do the passive aggressive thing later on right. and uh, you know have conversations with so-and-so and so and the gossip starts or the undermining kind of right. thing. And now with social media, oh, oh, God. that yeah. is a, a way to really and I, you know, I've said this all the time. Men are only 10 words from killing each other. <laughs> We're only 10 words. Okay, and that's why men don't really like getting into physical confrontations because mm -hmm. they can literally get hurt. So usually that's why there's a lot of chest pounding, but there's really not a physical action. Yeah. Um, but they're only 10 words from hurting each other. I think with women, they use a 1,000 words to cut a 1,000 times. You know, I think it's an interesting concept, though, because, you know, it used to be women that were more passive aggressive with that and would have the long game. Mm -hmm. You're going to screw with me? I got the long game, and I will screw with you and your friends for years. Right. Kind of thing. But I think that when this new media, it is kind of turning men into women and women into men where you're seeing those lines being crossed the last time i saw another um, colleague of ours that went off and just went kind of nuts at an event um, it was a man who started the brouhaha on social right. media the gossip and ying, 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 and people chiming in it was more men that were jumping on to that thread and name calling and being pissy and unprofessional. There were women too, right. but it's interesting. And and to me, you know what? I think that 15 years ago, 20 years ago, that would have never happened. No, I that, think they that just. I think they would have right. duked it out. They just would have stepped outside and yeah. handled it. And I think a lot of respects that would happen today if it would, if it got that far. Is but social media castrating our? Oh, modern I think there's male. a big story about the modern male. I don't think uh, the day, you know, women ask me all the time, where's the alpha males? Oh, they're dead. So you feelings know, uh, in business, I think you have to use your feelings as your trigger for thought. Why am I feeling this? Mm -hmm. But then you have to apply logic, strategy, and politics to it. Thinking brain, get out of your reptile right. brain, get into your thinking brain. Don't react. Don't react. Respond. Feel, acknowledge, see what's going on, right. gut check, and then get back up here right. and get to business and we can talk about you know that type of behavior and how it weakens a brand maybe we'll get in that in segment three, three. we'll be back